Hello and welcome to Barefoot Live or welcome back to Barefoot Live for the second of our sessions. I'm Dr Chips and I'm here with... Hi everyone, I'm Miss Lekio. Um, and it's a pleasure to have you all tuning in again from wherever you are tuning in from. We had uh, so many people tune in last time and watch the video. It's absolutely fantastic. I think we are saying now, is it over 3,000 views now? It is. Yeah, oh, amazing. Yeah, amazing. so wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're down south, London, Bristol, Devon, up north, Scotland, Wales, Manchester, Birmingham, welcome. Um, we've got loads to get through today. So I will ask, uh, I'll crack on actually, I'll ask Miss Legio to explain what we are going to be doing today. Great, so we're going to start off with an unplugged activity, um, thinking about why we need variables. We're going to have a little look at uh, variables in our everyday lives, so how variables are used all around us. We're going to have a look at one of our interactive learning games, Asteroid Blaster. And we are going to set you a coding challenge for you to have a go at yourselves uh, using your uh, variables and what you know about coding. Fantastic. So there is a lot to get to today. It's all around variables. We're going to go on a journey through variables and learn about what they are and how we might use them. And I, I think you said we're going to start with an unplugged uh, activity today that we're going to model to you. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to play a game. We're going to play a, a times table challenge game. Now, for a challenge game, we need a challenger. So let me just say, uh, see if Evelina is there. Are you waiting in the wings? Hello again, Evelina. Again, again. Yes. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Right, I, are you ready for some times table uh, action this afternoon? Yes. You are, right. Okay, so I'm going to be um, the quiz master this afternoon and I'm going to pose some times table questions and it will be shout out for the fastest quickest correct answer if you're watching this at home you can uh, shout out if you're in school hand up or maybe writing on a whiteboard um, etc so that we're not getting in trouble so here we go first one are you ready yes six yeah. times six Perfect. oh very good evelina next we're gonna do my favorite one seven times eight Oh, very good, Evelina. Uh, next, we'll do five times nine. Forty-five. Very good, yeah. Miss Legio. Yeah, very quick there. Are you, do you like your nines? I do, yeah. 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 I have a five, though. Uh, well, yes, and, and they are one and the same with that one, turning it round. Okay, next one, seven times seven. Forty-nine. Excellent. Now... Who's winning, by, by the way? Is it Miss Legio that's winning? Um, or is it Evelina? Oh, I think it was me. I, I think... Oh, oh, I, it was I, me! Was it, 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 it. I can't remember. Oh. I d was no one keeping track? <coughs> no, I wasn't. No. Oh, no, I wasn't either. If only we had a way of recording and storing your score. And as it happens, I have here... A couple of mini whiteboards, they have been whiter in the past boards, um, with uh, your names um, written above them, with a box drawn on them. Oh, 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 I need to go that way. Um, and what we're going to look at now is we're going to play our game again, and we're going to use these mini whiteboards to keep track of our score. Because what we'll learn today is that these mini whiteboards are a bit like variables because we can use variables to keep track of things. So you can see that I've given my uh, variables here a sensible name, Evelina's score and Miss Legio's score, and I've set their initial values. So no, uh, no cheating, no giving anyone a head start, zero each, no points each. So let's have another go, a few more questions. Here we okay. go. Next one. Eight times eight. Sixty-four. Oh, I think Evelina just got it then. Um, so what I can do, and we'll see that we can do this with variables, is we can rub out the zero that we had in there, and we can change that to one point for you. Excellent. Okay, next one. Uh, Eleven times ten. One hundred and ten. Very good, Miss Legio. 
Let's do the same for you. We're going to rub out the zero and we're going to place one in there. We change the value in our score variable. We'll do a couple more questions. Here we go. Uh, next, we're going to do three times seven. Oh, very good, Evelina. So now I'm going to change that from a one to a two. Uh, six times six. Oh, very good again. And I think we're going to leave it there with a big round of applause for Evelina. Times well table done. champion for Barefoot Live. Thank Very well done to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your help um, again. Uh, now, these, these whiteboards here have been representing uh, variables, and we're going to learn a little bit more about variables as we go through. Let me just show you a slide to recap what a variable is, because that's what we're learning about today. A variable is a simple way of storing one piece of information somewhere in a computer's memory whilst a program is running and getting that information back later. So we've got a couple of examples here on this slide. In computer games, we might have a score or we might be creating a quiz in Scratch and the answer might have been stored there as Manchester. But we also have some additional examples here, Miss Legio. Yeah, great. So what we can see here are things that we might see all around us and perhaps might even realise that we're using variables. So the first one you can see is a shop till, so like a till in a supermarket. And um, that uses variables to store information about all the items that we buy. And as more items are scanned, the variables total would increase and tell us how much we need to pay. Um, we might use a stopwatch, so you might use one of those perhaps in PE lessons, um, and that would keep track of seconds, minutes, and hours, so that would use a variable to um, keep track of time passing. And you may also have seen uh, a car park counter, so these count cars in and out and use a variable to tell us how many spaces are available in the car park, depending on how many cars it's counted in or out. I've got one. Oh, oh, it. oh, you've got one as well, have you, Evelina? Go on. Yeah, a Fitbit. Oh, how would a Fitbit be the variable to um, Basically, it, count, it keeps track of your steps. Oh, okay. it, yeah, yeah, it does indeed. It's a good example. Yeah, so you've got that variable on the screen and you can look down and you can see how many steps you've done that day. Perfect. Another great example of a variable. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to show you where you'll find your first task for today, which is to have a play on our interactive learning game Asteroid Blaster. So let me just show you where you will find this. Um, if you go to the home learning page of the Barefoot website, so if you go to barefootcomputing.org and click at the top at home or go directly to barefootcomputing.org forward slash home learning and then you scroll down the page and you'll see all of the other at home learning resources that we have, which some of which we looked at last week and at the bottom here you will find Asteroid Blaster and this is the game that we're going to have a go at playing uh, this week because it's going to teach us even more about variables. So let's have a look. Let's Should we have a bit of a play at this Miss Legio? Yeah, sounds great. Um, and I've, sorry, I forgot to say, I think Evelina's gone and I forgot to say thank you very much Evelina for your times table questions and your contribution on the Fitbit. Thank you very much. Uh, right, we'll go, we'll go back to the game. Uh, so, let's play Asteroid Blaster. Here we go. And Okay, let me just turn the sound off there. So, it's saying from Captain Fizz, uh, Miss Legio. Hi, I am Fizz, the captain of the Asteroid Blaster ship. It's a pleasure to have you on board. What's your alien name? So, I'm going to put in an alien name. I'm not going to use my real name, but put... put uh, pop in Zog there. Nice to meet you, Zog. Our ship is tasked with getting rid of asteroids because a lot of our spaceships tend to crash into them. We destroy the asteroids using our ship's special lasers. 
would you be able to help us clear some asteroids? Sure, this sounds, uh, sounds fun. Right, I'm going to have a go, Miss Legio. I'll see how many I can get. Here we go. Let's start the game. And let's blast some asteroids. Here we go. Oh, I think I'm quite quick at this. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, Captain Fizz is saying, wow, do you think you can guess how many of the small asteroids you blew up? Ah, uh, I'm not sure I can. Can you, miss? Hmm, I can't remember. I wasn't keeping count, actually. No, it says I think I blew up 12, 11 or 13. Um, mm. What do you reckon? What sh I mean, because we weren't keeping track. What should we have a guess at? Um, should we try 11? Try 11. Oh, so 11 happened to be correct, but it was just a guess, wasn't it? I mean, oh, that was lucky. That was lucky, yeah, because we weren't keeping track. Let's see what it, it suggests next. Hmm, Captain Fizz is saying, I wish we could keep track of the numbers of asteroids we destroy more, more easily. Yeah, I wish they could as well, because then we wouldn't have to guess. We shouldn't have tried, we, sh we shouldn't have to try and keep count ourselves. Let's chat to Buzz, the chief technician aboard my ship. Now, I'm going to leave it there because I've got a sneaky suspicion that uh, the chief technician might start suggesting um, variables, perhaps. What do you think? I wonder. I think perhaps he might. It sounds like a good way to try and keep score of something to me. Definitely, definitely. So that's their first task today, isn't it? Yep, so your first task today is a reminder to have a go at the game, see how many asteroids you can blast and find out how variables can help, help you keep track. Fantastic. Um, super. Now, moving on from that, once you've had fun and learned more about variables by playing Asteroid Blaster, we've, we're we going to set you a bit of a coding challenge today in Scratch, which I'm really excited about. Um, now, just to uh, show you where to find the compart completed Scratch file for this, We've actually put the links in the uh, YouTube description. So if I go back to the YouTube video, and this is going to get very confusing for me because now I can really about. Uh, see myself talking to myself. Um, in the underneath part of the, uh, the description for the YouTube link that you are following at the moment, you've got the Alien Blast Scratch link. And there are also a link to some Scratch help files there as well if you need them. So that's just to show you where you will find the um, Scratch files for this part of today's activity. Uh, and when you click on that link, it will take you to this Alien Blast uh, Barefoot Live game. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick play on this game. And the instructions say that I can use the arrow keys to move the rocket left and right, space to shoot at the aliens and how many points can you score so let's give it a go i'm getting all the fun jobs today miss uh there you go i'm playing this one now so let's see how many i got i can get i've got 30 seconds here ah so i see the alien disappears and i score three points by looks of it when i hit him and i'm on six nine so far I'm trying to work out where he might reappear there he is can i get him again yes come on i reckon i can get three more here we go one let's try and get one more uh and can i get another one no game over so i scored 18 this leg here which is not not, not too bad not a, yeah not bad but let's now have a look inside this scratch project so let's see the code that's making up this game i'm going to click see inside here and i'm going to click uh specifically onto the alien here and this leg here maybe you could talk us through, do a little bit of code reading to see what we've got going on here, perhaps. Yeah, definitely. OK, so looking inside the code um, for the alien, we can see that um, when the green flag is clicked, it says if touching laser beam, so if it's touching the laser beam, then it's going to change the score by three. So I think the score there, the orange block is our variable. So it's going to change the score by three. It's going to hide. It's going to wait three seconds and then it's going to show again. So there we can see that our score is changing by three. 
Um, and I think I can also see there that as well as the score variable, there's a timer variable in this game. Um, there is. So if you've got a little bit more experience maybe with Scratch, that might be something that you want to have a little go um, tinkering with and seeing if you can change that around too. Yeah, super. So there's two, definitely two variables that are being used in this game, the score and the timer. And I was thinking perhaps the task that we could set today would be, uh, could be how could we make this game more interesting to play and by doing that ha have the chance to tinker with and explore and change some of the variables. So I was thinking, uh, Ms. Leggio, what about if we um, ask people to add in two more aliens, two additional aliens that you have to shoot at? And maybe they could be different sizes and you could score different points depending on which one you hit. What do you think? Yeah, great idea. So maybe um, if we had a bigger alien, that would probably be easier to hit, wouldn't it? So maybe yeah. um, for the smaller alien, that could give you more points. So if you hit the smaller alien, you score more points and then fewer points for the larger one. That, yeah, that sounds great. Perhaps, uh, would you mind creating an algorithm for this then? Um, okay. Because when we're doing, uh, when we're programming, the first step is to create our algorithm um, to explain what we're, to describe what we're going to code. And then I'll use that then to make the changes. So I'll let you explain what you're going to do with your algorithm, Miss. Okay, brilliant. So I'm just going to draw out the different um, sprites that I'm going to have. So we said, We'd have a big alien, didn't we? Um, and let's just do a little sketch of my big alien there. And so what do I want to happen? Um, when the big alien is blasted, um, let's say score one point maybe yep. for the last one. And then I'm going to have a small alien as well. Let's just sketch him out. Small alien. Oops. And for this one, I'll say when the small alien is blasted. Um, so what do we say? Score five points. Yeah, I think so, because it's going to be a bit trickier to hit that small alien, yeah. isn't it? challenging yeah okay super so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to use your um algorithm and i'm going to make those changes and, and model to everyone how to make those changes in scratch so i'm just going to make a slight change there with that so hopefully now you should all be able to see uh mrs algorithm and also see the scratch file as well i'm just quickly glancing down to check that's the case and it is super so um, there are a um, couple of steps here. The first step is to duplicate the alien that we've got in Scratch. So because we want two more aliens. So the easiest way to do this is to right click on the alien in the sprite uh, window and click duplicate. And what that will do is duplicate that sprite, but also duplicate all of the code with that's within that sprite. So you can see now we've got alien two and at the moment um, we've got exactly the same code as for alien one. So I'm gonna duplicate it a further time so that we have got our uh, three aliens now rather than uh, one. And then what I'm going to do, just looking, double checking from the algorithm there. So being really uh, clear, we're for the big alien, uh, we're going to change it so that you only score one point. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, um, let's just make these aliens appear by running and stopping the program there. Um, I'm going to make this alien bigger. So let's change the size to 50. And then we have a much larger alien. And for this alien, just reading through the code here, where do I have to change it? Well, if it's touching the laser beam, then change the score by three. Now we don't want it to change the score by three. For this one, we only want it to change the score by one. And there we go for that one. Now for the third alien, let's click onto this. This time we are going to make it smaller. So rather than a uh, size of 25, let's go to a size of 10. There it is, L much, much smaller now. And if you 
are lucky enough or accurate enough to strike this one with your laser beam, then you can get a score of, uh, what did we say on your algorithm? Five. That one. There we go. So I've been following my algorithm there. Super. So let's have a quick uh, go at this now. Let's see with the uh, changes whether it's a bit more exciting to play. Let's have a go and see. Oh yes, right. Okay. Uh, oh, the little the little one is very tricky to hit, Miss uh, Miss Legio. It's yeah. I'm chasing it, but I can't get it at the moment. I've managed to. Sc oh yes, I've just hit it. Full, oh, well a full five, uh, five points. And let's see if I can get it again. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Eight seconds left. Seven, six. And I've already scored 31 points, would you believe? Well, that was, I got two then. Oh, 37. But I can confirm that it is definitely more exciting uh, now that we have got the... Uh, other aliens in there as well. Sorry, I was just doing some trickery there to find you, and we're back now. <laughs> so, so there we go. So that's the second task today, isn't it, for everyone to have a go at that? That's right. And we know where to find the scratch game. We do. Yeah, I'll just show it one more time. Um, let me sh remind everyone that on the Barefoot Computing Home Learning page, if you go back to the link where you are watching us, and I'll just turn myself down. There we go. In the description, uh, you will find the link to the Scratch game online. So, yeah, everyone's got that. And you said, I think, Dr. Chips, there was some help files there as well. There are. You? Yeah, I've put a link. There. Yeah, I've put a link there to the Scratch website, which actually provides a number of um, tutorials, simple tutorials. If you're less confident with Scratch and you want to recap any of those first, that will introduce you. Uh, to some of the ideas that we've been using today. Great. So, I think um, we've managed to get through everything. Uh, we've done lots today, and all exploring the idea of variables. What have we got coming up this time next week then, Miss? So, this time next week, next Tuesday, um, the 9th of February, is Safer Internet Day. Oh, you might know that already. So um, at 1.30 next Tuesday, we're going to be having a Safer Internet Day special. And we're going to be sharing two fabulous online safety games with you. Um, we're going to be sharing a new Cyber Snakes game. It's just being released. And also a brand new um, game called The Fisherman. So that is Fisherman mm -hmm. with a P-H, PH, not an F. Yeah, and these... Be excited about those. Yeah, because they really are hot off the press. They are new releases that we are going to be debuting and showing you how to uh, play with to learn about fishing and about keeping safe online. So looking forward to that. So thank you everybody for tuning in once again. We will see you at same time next week for Safer Internet Day special. See you then. Bye for now. Bye.